Welcome back to our intermediate financial accounting class. In our last few segments, we've been talking about taxes, why they're important, how they hit the financial statements, what the steps are to calculating income tax expense and deferred taxes and our taxes payable. And we've done a nice straightforward example that allowed us to draw and illustrate how deferred taxes are working. Now it's time to take those examples to the next level and start looking at what happens when our enacted tax rate changes between years over that timing difference between gap and tax. And we're gonna jump right into this. I, we've got a journal entry waiting for us. I don't wanna wait to get to it. I'm just so excited to get there. So let's jump right into this example. So this is HTRN Incorporated. They entered into a large construction contract. They think it'll take them three years to get it done. Under their revenue recognition assumptions, they believe that they'll be able to recognize 2.7 million in revenue in year one, 4 million and 50,000 in year two, 2,250,000 in year three. Costs will be 1.5 million in year one, 2.25 in year two, 1.25 in year three. The client is gonna pay us $3 million each year for the next three years. And we want to do the journal entries, assuming that they have a 30% tax rate in year one, then it's gonna to jump to 35 in year two and then drop to 22% in year three. Now, before we jump into the actual calculations of the numbers, the first thing we need to look at is whether this is a permanent difference or a temporary difference. If you remember from our earlier discussion, a permanent difference means that there's a difference in the values that the company will report under gap and tax. A temporary difference means the only difference is in the timing. So we'll recognize the same amount, just not at the same time between the two methods. So the way to answer that question is to add up my revenues for gap versus tax. So under gap, we recognize 2.7 in year one, 4.5 in year two, 2.25 in year three for a total of $9 million. For tax purposes, I recognize the revenue as the cash comes in. So that's 3 million a year for three years, 9 million for gap, 9 million for tax. The only difference here is in timing. So this is a temporary difference and a temporary difference means deferred taxes. Yes, more fun. So exciting. So let's jump right into our calculations and run through the steps for each of these three years. Now to save a little bit of time as we move forward, I'm not gonna build the basics. So again, if you're taking this class from me, you should have access to a template very much like this in our class website that you can just download. If not, you might wanna take a minute, copy your template from the work we did in example one and just delete some of the specific numbers and descriptions, and you should be good to go. If you need to take a minute, go ahead and pause here, get your template ready, and then we can move forward. Now that we've got a template and we've got these basics ready, let's jump right into calculating our tax expense for the period. We're gonna start calculating income before taxes. Those are our gap numbers. And under gap, we said we would recognize 2.7 million in revenue in year one. Our expenses for the year, will be 1.5 million. And luckily for us, there are no differences between gap and tax for the expenses, just for the revenue coming in. Our income before taxes then, for this first year of this contract are 1.2 million. I have no permanent differences because the only difference is in the timing of the revenues. So I can just move right on. Book taxable income is 1.2 million. And I know I've got a difference in revenues. How much? Well, the best way to determine how much is with that graph that we've been talking about. So under year one, I have gap revenue of 2.7 million. So 2.7 million. Tax revenue is 3 million. So that would be up here. And to get from gap to tax, I need a $300,000 increase from 2.7 million to 3 million. Again, I cannot emphasize enough how much easier your life will be if you get in the habit of actually drawing out this graph every time you look at a deferred tax difference. We're going from gap to tax, gap to tax, gap to tax, whatever that difference is, that's what we're gonna put into our calculation, please make your life so much easier if you will take the time to learn this secret. So now that we know the number, 
300,000 positive because we had to go up to the tax number. We end up with taxable income of 1.5 million. Our taxable income is 1.5. Our tax rate in this first year is 30%. So our tax is payable. What we owe the government for this year is $450,000. Now we need to move on to steps five and six. And last time we did that with pictures. Now I want to walk you through a table version of doing this calculation, although you're still welcome to draw it in a picture if you want. It's just a good idea to get in the habit of being able to do it in tables so you can speed up your process. So I'm going to actually move the step seven description out of the way. We'll pick it back up later. Step five is to calculate net deferred taxes. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to create a table for all future years. Just like in the picture that we drew, we don't look at the current year because we've already accounted for the current year. That's what we did up here, accounted for the current year. So I just want the future year. So we have year two, we have year three, and then we'll have a total. And I'm going to make this into a nice looking table. So I'm going to center that, put a bottom border on it. I may have to make this column a little bit bigger so everything fits. We're going to start by fixing my typo. And then remember, just like we did with the graph, we're going to start with gap. It looks like I've got some funky formatting in there. So we'll get rid of that. My gap revenue in year two. This comes right from the slide and the information we were given. It'll be 4,050,000 in year two and 2,250,000 in year three. So 4,050,000 in year two, 2,250,000 in year three. Our tax revenue, remember we're going from gap to tax, $3 million, oops, 3 million, not 30 million. Each year. And now I can get the difference in revenues. And my formatting is a little off because of the way I cut and pasted. So let's see. I'm going to put a line in there. And we're going to take gap minus tax. Now, just to be clear, this calculation does the exact same thing as what we did in our example before. So this 1,050,000 is the same as this 35,000 that we drew up here. And the 750,000 is the same as either the 60,000 here or the 5,000 down here, whichever one you want to look at. But that's what we're doing. It's just a table version of what we drew in this example. So now that we have the difference in revenues, we're going to multiply by the enacted tax rate in those different years. And our tax rate is 35% in year two and 22% in year three. And if I multiply those, copy that across. Basically what we see is we have a deferred tax asset in a future year of 367,500 and a liability of 165,000 for a total effect of 202,500. Now let's stop right there. The way the table works is a positive number is an asset and a negative number is a credit or a liability. So this table is showing that we should have a deferred tax asset because of the tax effect this year. Well, is that right? Well, let's take a look. Up here, I'm paying taxes on more revenue than I think I should have to. So taxable income is higher than book income. I'm paying more in taxes than I think I should. If I've paid more in taxes, that's a prepayment of my taxes, and that's a deferred tax asset. So this comes out exactly the way we wanted it to, and that's our check to make sure we're good to go. Next, we need to do our step six, and step six is to create our T account. So our deferred tax account. I'm going to do some formatting. I want it to end at a debit of $202,500. I'm starting at zero, 
So my journal entry this time will be 202 minus zero. I need a debit in my journal entry. I actually am going to need three columns for my journal entry. So I'm going to need to move that. I'm going to move it way over here so it doesn't mess me up. And I'm going to bring it back and put it right there, I think. And this right here, step six, determining that journal entry amount. And now I'm ready to do step seven, which is the best part doing my journal entry. So just like we did before, I'm going to start with what I know. I know income tax payable. And I always start with that number myself because that's what I'm most sure of. I get it from my tax department usually. It's pretty straightforward. Next, I'll do my deferred tax, which will equal this 202. And then I'll use my income tax expense as my plug. So let's see, 450 minus 202 my adjusting entry taxes. Now, we talked about two ways of doing income tax expense. One of them is a plug like this. The other is to calculate both taxable income times the tax rate. But you'll notice in this case, they don't match up. They don't match up because these tax rates down here are different. So next year, I'm only going to pay taxes on $3 million instead of $4 million which is my gap number, and at that 35% tax rate, that's going to save me some money because I'm paying less in taxes than I would normally pay for gap. In year three, tax rate drops a lot. That's going to save me a lot of money because of a tax rate change as I pay on this last $3 million that I'm paying taxes on relative to gap. So it doesn't work anymore, this shortcut that we talked about up at the top, because we've got changes in our tax rate. So please be aware, this shortcut works great if your tax rate doesn't change. If your tax rate is changing, you can't use it. And that's why, again, it's better to just get in the habit of calculating income tax expense as our plug figure. With the journal entry done, that takes care of everything we need to look at for year one, but there's still years two and three that I wanna look at so that we're comfortable with this whole process from beginning to end as we resolve this temporary difference between gap and tax. We'll move on with years two and three next time. I'll see you then.